Imagine this. You're standing on a dock, watching a colossal ship glide across the water. But there's something unusual. This ship isn't made of steel or wood. It's made of concrete. Seems impossible, right? Today we dive into the remarkable story behind concrete ships. Why were they built? How did they work? And what can we learn from this intriguing chapter in engineering history? Why were ships built from concrete? To understand the origins of concrete ships, let's go back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries. During times of war, especially World War I and Chaitu, global demand for materials like steel and wood skyrocketed. Nations poured their resources into building weapons, vehicles, and military equipment, leaving little steel for shipbuilding. This led engineers to seek alternative materials. Enter concrete. Concrete, a mix of cement, water, sand, and aggregates was abundant and easy to produce. Its compressive strength and resistance to saltwater corrosion made it an appealing choice for shipbuilding, even if it sounded unconventional. The invention and early use of concrete ships. The idea of concrete ships wasn't entirely new. The first recorded attempts date back to the mid-19th century. A French builder, Joseph Louis Lambot, is credited with creating one of the earliest concrete boats in the 1850s. But it wasn't until the early 1900s that larger concrete ships entered the scene. World War I saw the construction of some of the first large-scale concrete ships, including barges and tankers. However, it wasn't until World War II that concrete shipbuilding reached its peak, especially in the United States. These ships were primarily used as a stopgap solution to address material shortages while ensuring essential supplies and troops could be transported efficiently. How did they stay afloat? The most common question is, how did these ships not sink? The answer lies in basic physics. Archimedes' principle of buoyancy. As long as the weight of the ship and its cargo was less than the weight of the water displaced by its hull, the ship would float. But it wasn't just about physics. These ships were carefully designed. Engineers used reinforced concrete, a blend of concrete and steel rods that gave the material much greater tensile strength. The hulls were built with internal compartments and hollow spaces to reduce weight and maintain buoyancy. The strengths and weaknesses of concrete ships. So, what were the advantages of concrete ships? For one, they were cheap and quick to produce. They could also withstand salt water far better than steel ships, which were prone to corrosion over time. Concrete ships were ideal for carrying heavy cargo, such as fuel or coal, over shorter distances. However, there were significant drawbacks. These ships were much heavier than their steel counterparts, making them slower and less fuel efficient. Maneuvering them was challenging, particularly in rough waters. As a result, they were primarily used for non-combat purposes like cargo transport. What happened to these ships after the war? After World War II, steel became more readily available, and concrete ships quickly became obsolete. Many were repurposed or deliberately sunk to create artificial reefs. These reefs became havens for marine life, turning abandoned vessels into thriving ecosystems. In some areas, remnants of these ships can still be seen today, serving as reminders of a unique period in maritime history. The Legacy of Concrete Ships Although concrete ships didn't stand the test of time as a primary transportation method, they left a lasting impact on engineering. Today, the principles used in their construction have inspired modern floating structures, including concrete platforms, docks, and even luxury floating homes. With advancements in technology, concrete's potential has grown exponentially. Who knows? Maybe one day, concrete ships could make a comeback, this time with improved designs and efficiency. So, what do you think of this fascinating chapter in engineering history? Are concrete ships a testament to human ingenuity, or do they belong in the category of bold but impractical experiments? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this journey into the past, give us a like and subscribe for more incredible stories about human innovation and creativity.